Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. Antecedent contained deletion is our second controversy. We want to figure out how we can resolve the interpretation of the elided VP in an antecedent contained deletion uh, environment. Um, there are two hypotheses on how this works. One is of DP movement of um, a DP containing an elided VP into the specifier of agarO, and the other is that it is covert QR of um, a quantified DP into the specifier of CP. Both these operations will uh, allow us to create a, a set of conditions where there is um, a reasonable antecedent. So let's recall what the problem is. In antecedent contained deletion, um, a sentence like Brandon read every book that Megan did, the thing that's omitted, the, um, the verb phrase that's omitted, seems to be contained within the verb phrase that is, it, that is its own antecedent. So Brandon read every book that Megan did. What did Megan do? She read every book that Megan did. What did Megan do? She read every book that Megan did. So it's an infinite loop that the thing that is elided is within its own antecedent. Uh, so that's, that's graphed here where we have a verb phrase that's elided and it is indexed with something that contains it. In earlier work, Chomsky um, ruled out these kinds of situations um, as what are called I over I uh, violations, I over I violations. But that's not actually going to work um, for us here. So let us see if we can figure out um, how to make this work. Um, so let us turn um, to uh, two possible solutions that have been proposed in the literature. The first hypothesis that's been proposed was proposed by the linguist Norbert Hornstein. And he proposed um, that what happens is the DP that is inside the verb phrase moves to the specifier of agarop. Now this is a movement we have already motivated. So we've already claimed that DPs move from this position to this agarO position to take accusative case. Um, so this movement is completely motivated because antecedent contained deletion only happens when you have a, a DP with a verb phrase inside of it. Um, once you do this movement, notice that what you ha effectively have is the antecedent for the deleted verb phrase does not, no longer contains the elided D VP itself. The elided VP is outside of it, it has moved outside of it. So this VP, the, the one that's ellipted, can look around the tree and says, oh yeah, this is the verb phrase that is my antecedent. And so you don't get the circularity that you would normally get in antecedent contained deletion structures. Um, so this is one hypothesis. An alternative hypothesis was proposed by the linguist, the linguist Ivan Sag. And Ivan Sag um, observed the following thing. The DP in antecedent contained deletion is always headed by a quantifier. So for example, um, uh, Sheila read every book that Mary did. Every book. There's a quantifier there. Um, so uh, what he observes is then these DPs are all quantified DPs, and we have a rule that moves quantified elements. It's the rule of quantifier raising. So he proposes instead that um, the DP starts in, the, in its base position, just where it surfaces, and then it moves up into the specifier of CP as a kind of WH movement. Uh, which is quantifier raising. This movement would happen um, covertly, 
you'll remember that in English, quantifier raising is a covert operation. You don't actually hear it. But it's motivated by the interpretations of um, sentences with a wide and narrow scope. So um, this proposal um, derives um, the property where um, trees uh, um, have a DP with the elided VP that's outside of the VP that it's antecedent, but it does so using an operation that is otherwise motivated, which is QR. So the elliptic VP is up here, uh, and the, uh, the antecedent for that deleted VP is over here, and you'll notice the antecedent no longer contains its own ellipsis. So um, that allows us also, also to explain um, uh, the non-circularity of um, antecedent-contained deletion. The two hypotheses um, operate on the same basic principle, which is move something outside of the verb phrase that is the antecedent so that they are no longer, uh, this, this verb phrase is no longer dominating the thing it is connected to. Um, and that either happens, uh, as in Sugg's hypothesis, by QR, or in Hornstein's hypothesis, by movement to agarro. So what are the differences between the two hypotheses? Um, the quantifier raising hypothesis says that movement is covert, so it happens between spellout and LF, and it's a kind of um, WH movement or A bar movement, and the, um, the relevant DP lands in the specifier of the CP. The DP hypothesis, Hornstein's hypothesis, says that the movement is overt, and the movement is a kind of DP movement and lands in agar OP. This is a movement we've independently proposed um, to get accusative case on objects. Now, what kind of tests would you construct to distinguish these two hypotheses? I'm going to leave that open to you to think about. It's worth considering how we could distinguish the QR hypothesis from the DP hypothesis.